All right, so we're about to go pick up another computer. This computer was listed as a cinema display in a 2012 MacBook Pro. But since I'm so good at knowing every little thing about older Apple hardware, I know that it's actually a Thunderbolt display and it's the Retina MacBook Pro from 2012. The reason I could tell is you'll see in the picture right here is because of the adapter that was used for the charger. It's a MagSafe 1 to MagSafe 2 adapter. And then also in the listing, he calls it a cinema display, but he says it has ethernet and a Thunderbolt port on the back of it. And if anybody knows anything about the cinema displays, it's that they came with only three USB type two ports on the back. So that is great for me because I'm going to be getting a Thunderbolt display and a Retina 2012 MacBook Pro for six hundred bucks and it's close it's only like 45 minutes away plus my girlfriend and i needed to get out of the house anyway to go get some stuff for the super bowl so i'm really happy about the computer and i'll see you when i get it or maybe maybe during the buying process and on the way there or something but i'll see you in a minute so i just got the box my hair looks bad whatever and i just got the computer with the box and you can see it's got 16 gigabytes of ram 512 gigabyte flash and then it's got 15.4 inches 2.7 gigahertz i7 he literally kept everything all the way i mean i have the i even all the way down to the uh, stupid wind is ruining this all the way down to the cleaning cloth that comes with the new macbook pro on all new macbook pros so then if we go to the back seat you can see the thunderbolt display with the box now he kept calling it a cinema display but clearly thunderbolt display and it has thunderbolt io facetime hd camera speakers and magsafe power it also comes with an ethernet jack and a couple of usb i think it's type a but i think it's only uh usb 2.0 i'll have to double check on that but i think it's only 2.0 because i think this came out in 2011. so this thing itself is worth 400 bucks and it has the box which makes it even a lot easier if I were to sell this to ship it. So theoretically, I bought I bought this for 600 bucks. I'll show a picture of the screen again here. He was only asking 600, I didn't even talk him down. It was too good of a deal, I had to get it. I could sell this for 400 bucks and then get a Retina 2012 MacBook Pro for $200. Although keeping in mind the fact that that's worth six to seven and this is worth 400 bucks, like I literally could today flip, turn around and flip it for 400 bucks profit. Although I may just use this as my new computer setup and sell my Windows computer because I guess I'm one of those type of guys who's always selling stuff. Oh, and it also came with, it also came with last, the last generation version of the Magic Keyboard and the Magic Mouse, both with, that both just take batteries. And we are back at my apartment. The laptop and monitor back there is all set up. You can see that in all of its pride and glory. And I wanted to give you guys my thoughts on both pieces of equipment, how they work together. Should you buy this type of setup? Should you stay away from something like this? And I would just like to go over all of the positives and negatives. So I've been using this setup now for about three to four days, although I've been using these types of equipment for a lot longer than that. I used to have a cinema display back when I lived in Florida for 15 minutes, and then I had another cinema display before I left for Florida and Ohio. So a Thunderbolt display, while it has a lot more advantages than a cinema display I've used before, and obviously my history with a Retina 15-inch MacBook Pro has been well documented on this channel. But I wanted to talk about how good this setup actually is, and should you buy it. Let's start with the Thunderbolt display. These Thunderbolt displays were built in 2011, actually so old in fact it actually uses MagSafe 1 and you have to get a MagSafe 1 to MagSafe 2 converter which these Thunderbolt displays actually came with in the box. Pretty interesting. So to use it with a Retina MacBook Pro you have to convert that charging port to the newer standard and now the older standard because they got rid of MagSafe altogether. But how does it hold up? good. <laughs> I really have enjoyed the Thunderbolt display to this point. It's been something that I didn't know I would actually enjoy it because I did like my cinema display, but I was like, it has three ports in the back that are all USB type A. And I was like, what? This doesn't really add anything. But oh my goodness, this Thunderbolt display is a little bit different. I'm seeing a little bit different tune. 
On the back, it features three USB Type A 2.0 ports, so not the same speeds as 3.0, but keep in mind this monitor did come out back in 2011, so it's a little bit old, and they did sell it all the way up until 2016, relatively interesting, and then they introduced the new Thunderbolt 3 MacBook Pros, and that form factor is in the USB Type C, and this is in the mini display port form factor of the Thunderbolt capable port. It also features an ethernet jack, which is amazing. At where I live, my Wi-Fi is okay, but my ethernet is amazing. So I get about 400 megabits down on my ethernet. I'm gonna flex on you guys a little bit, and that's on ethernet, and when I'm just using Wi-Fi, it's closer to like 10, maybe like eight. I think it's because there's a wall right here separating it, but Ethernet for me is a must. One of the reasons I've been reluctant to go back to a laptop in the recent weeks has been because I wanted to keep my Ethernet because Ethernet to me is a big, big point. If I don't have access to the Ethernet, everything moves slower. I'm paying for this speed. I should take advantage of this speed. So I've been buying up Ethernet cables like crazy and this monitor has an Ethernet cable built in. It literally requires one cable to be plugged in this Thunderbolt display was probably about four or five years ahead of its time because it features all of these ports in the back of it with one cable. The cinema display required a display cable and then it also required you to plug in a USB cable into the MacBook Pro and then it had obviously the charging for the MacBook Pro. But this uses just one cable. And now I understand that the bandwidth limitations are going to be there. So if you want to use the Thunderbolt port on the back of that Thunderbolt display, you're not gonna get the peak speeds if you also have three drives connected with USB, and then you also have an ethernet cable plugged into the back of that. However, the good news is, is that it's 10 gigabits per second, so it's still relatively fast, although it's not the Thunderbolt 2 protocol. And if you are an eGPU snob like I am, you know that the differences between Thunderbolt 1 and Thunderbolt 2 are pretty apparent. You're not gonna lose 50% of your performance, but based off of a PCIe slot when you plug a graphics card into that, you're gonna lose about 30% when running Thunderbolt 1. And that's definitely one of my complaints about the MacBook Pro. But all in all, the Thunderbolt display is amazing. I am in love with it. I actually have it on my desk right now and I took off my ultra wide monitor that I was in love with as well. This has been an amazing experience. It runs at 60 hertz, it's 1440p, it's a great monitor, it has great colors. I don't know how color accurate it is, it doesn't really matter to me. All I know is that it looks good. I like Apple's color calibration when looking at some of their monitors, including the Cinema Display, Thunderbolt Display, and even their MacBook Pros. That's what it's great for. One of the negatives with it, obviously Thunderbolt 1, USB Type A with the 2.0 limitations, holding that to a much slower than USB Type 3. Although, it's still definitely usable for an external hard drive that you just plug in and just forget about for time machine backups. But the biggest problem I would say is the cost. I actually got mine for such a great price. As you know, I mentioned it in the video before, 400 bucks is about what these things go for. Would I buy it for 400 bucks? No, I don't ever buy anything for that expensive. If I buy something, I normally buy it for super cheap and then sell it, but that's just kind of how I do things. However, if you're in the market for a nice 1440p display, this monitor used to cost like over $1,000. So the fact that it's only 400 bucks now, it comes with ethernet, it has the Thunderbolt port. So if you do need to plug in some type of Thunderbolt device, like an audio device or faster storage, it has that in the back of the monitor. All you need to do in order to connect to those is to just plug in the one display port slash Thunderbolt cable that is in the back of the Thunderbolt display into your MacBook Pro, and then you'll be good to go. So all in all, I would say 400 bucks, not a terrible price for it. I would probably be much more comfortable paying in the 250 to $300 price point, but it's still really a good deal even at 400 bucks. I know that's crazy for me to even say, but honestly for 400 bucks, I mean, this thing is killer. I'm in love with it. And the speakers sound amazing. It also has the same functionality as your MacBook Pro. You increase the brightness, the brightness increases, you decrease the volume, the volume decreases, and it's an all around an amazing, amazing screen. So now let's talk about the MacBook Pro. I think one of the best things to say about this computer, and even that display behind me, is their timeless design. 
Apple really thought everything through with these computers in terms of design, not necessarily in terms of upgradability or ease of fixability or anything like that. It was all about design. The 2012 Retina MacBook Pro was designed for 2012 and that laptop design was sold all the way up until last year in 2018 when they finally discontinued the 2015 Retina MacBook Pro. The design itself is timeless. Apple could have just kept that super thin, sleek design in their newest laptops and people would have been probably more happy because they got more ports. But even looking at the Thunderbolt display, it carries over the same iMac design language with the beautiful aluminum design, the aluminum chassis, and all in all, an amazing look. Actually, I think Apple should make their next iMac look similar to that because they could probably have much better cooling because of the thickness of the chassis. But onto the MacBook Pro. It comes with an i7, the most powerful i7 that you could put inside of one of these MacBook Pros. It is the i7-3820QM, I believe. If I'm wrong, I'll put it on the screen here. It's the 2.7 gigahertz model. It comes with a GT650M, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. Let's start with the specs. How do they hold up in 2019? Well, they hold up shockingly well. This is mainly due to Apple's really, really good optimization. Interestingly enough, I had a Dell XPS 15 that I actually just literally dropped off at FedEx that had an i7-7700HQ. And when running Geekbench, don't get me wrong, Geekbench is not the end-all, be-all test, but the i7-7700HQ on the XPS 15 could only manage about 12,800 on the multi-core side. Dell has some really weird things, and so does Intel, where it gets kind of low scores because it doesn't really get utilized, but it's kind of weird, and on battery, it's really bad. Actually, the power delivery on the MacBook Pro on battery is the only laptop that you can buy that when on battery can deliver the full performance of the actual laptop. Every other laptop seems to throttle just slightly. But this MacBook Pro running a third gen i7, a 22 nanometer processor. They're already on seven nanometer with Ryzen and they're gonna be at 10 nanometer with Intel. This is an older chip, but it got a 13,000 on the multi-core side on Geekbench. That holds up in 2019. And one of the main reasons it does is because of Apple's amazing optimization with its software. They take advantage of every little bit of their hardware and squeeze it and wring it out to give it its most and best performance. You can even see this with Premiere Pro. I was editing this video and I have been editing this video. 10-bit, 1080p footage shot on a GH5. Not the most demanding files, but relatively demanding. When I was editing them in Premiere Pro, the computer got hot. It got hot, the fans kicked on pretty early, and it got warm. This is after cleaning it out and reapplying thermal paste. But it was able to handle the timeline with no issue. There was no drop frames. I was using half resolution, but I was able to scrub through the timeline, and it was super, super smooth. I was pretty shocked, but Adobe and Apple have worked really well together to give a lot of optimization with their MacBook Pros and Adobe suite of apps because everybody knows that when you buy a MacBook Pro, you buy it for video editing. Whether that's actually true or not, it doesn't really matter because Adobe thinks it's true, at least true enough to really optimize well for MacBook Pros. So this MacBook Pro in 2019 is absolutely a go buy it. It'll be the cheapest Retina MacBook Pro. The screen is amazing. Specs, the GT650 is, is lousy. It's a trash graphics card. You might as well just use the Intel integrated graphics on, on the i7. But at the end of the day, 16 gigabytes of RAM holds up in 2019. The i7-3820QM with Apple's optimization, a relatively powerful chip even in a mobile computer by 2019 standard. No, it's not a six core chip, but like I've always said, you don't always need the most powerful, you just need what's right for you. And this 2012 MacBook Pro is right for me right now and I think I'm going to be switching to this as my full-time setup. I'm gonna finish editing this video and I'll probably give my thoughts in a later video if I actually do decide to switch full-time to this setup. But I do have my external trackpad, which is an absolute must. So what are the negatives? Well, everything's a little bit older, so there are those negatives. The screen isn't the brightest, the speakers aren't the best. The IO isn't quite as good as the 2015, 2014, or 2013. It does only conform to the Thunderbolt 1 protocol, which is 10 gigabits per second, which isn't terrible, but if you did want to run an eGP, which you could do, you're going to lose quite a bit of performance, and you're only going to get about 70% bandwidth. 
And honestly, when you look at the cost, and if you don't need the portability, you might as well just go with like a 2015 iMac 5K or 2014 iMac 5K, because you'll get better CPU performance and better graphical performance. That'll probably be cheaper with a better screen than when you compare it to that MacBook Pro with an eGPU, because that eGPU will have to be so overpowered because you only will get 70% of the performance. But other than that, this computer is awesome. It's the first Retina MacBook Pro they made, the first new fans that were like, not exactly, I'm not sure what it was called. Johnny Ive said it really cool. Portable to the user. Air is pulled into vents and propelled through sculpted cavities by fans with asymmetrically positioned blades. And all in all, it's a great laptop. I'm really happy with it. I'm gonna be using this to edit some videos and see if I could switch to this setup full time because then I could sell my monitor and my way overkill computer that I no longer really need if this edits video fine because I like having a laptop and being able to take it from place to place to place. So what do you guys think? This was an amazing deal. You're not gonna always find a deal like this. But if you do, you have to jump on something like this, especially considering the fact that if I were to sell one piece of this setup, I would make almost all the money back and I would essentially get the other piece for free or for a deep, deep, deep discount. So I'd like to know your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to check out the podcast channel. It'll be linked down below. And also don't forget to support me on Patreon so I can buy more stuff like this. And that way I can make more better videos. <laughs> all right, thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.